here at the Titan Ranch, there's uh, plenty of space where you can walk your dogs. They are doing some improvements on it to where they can be able to have more uh, RV sites coming soon. Here's where they're having all the brand new sites putting in, and as you can see, Vinny's right there in the background. Getting ready to go into the silo. Take care of five year airports. Okay. And a crew of four would have brought them to every 24 hours to come down the stairs that we're coming down in the approximate location. We rebuilt these stairs because this whole thing was blown up actually. So you can see the jagged concrete over there. That's actually where the end of the back up to gravel up. So that kind of shows you where it was blown up. This is all just filled in. So 11 years ago, DP actually excavated all this out and then opened this big door right here. Uh -huh. We have four to six thousand pound glass doors. And these are to keep anything from outside coming in, basically. So, absolutely, yep. Um, so, if there was a nuclear detonation outside, um, depending on how far away it was, these doors would keep that blast out. So, you said it was 6,000 pound door, there's four of them. So when GT got down here for the first time, this door was shut and this pin was actually holding it closed. So, um, to, and everything beyond here was full of water because the, the way they blew it up, it filled with water over the years. So um, they had to push on this door with a big excavator, pull that pin out and all that water came out. I'll show you a video later of all that happening. So we'll come on into the actual glass block area. So normally the crew of four would have entered in the tracking area of the stairs, they would have been buzzed in, and then buzzed in again to open this door, they would have to close this door before they open this door. Just kind of like, so that where, that's how they would access it. Um, okay. and there's actually kind of three parts to the complex here. So we are in the last block right here. Um, we've come down the stairs, and then we have a second part of the block block that's coming up, and that is, that is actually where you would enter and into so, um, the three parts of the launch control center, flat slot, and the silo. Um, starting with the launch control center, we have three stories underground. We have level one, two, and three. Level one was the crew quarters. That that position for the crew only place our ought to be by themselves. And by the way, when you're underground, you have access. So that's why we have one, two, and three instead of three, two, one. Um, and then level two is the actual launch control center where you're trying to use the launch missile. Level three is four systems, battery back out here, handling, and then an escape and ventilation shaft over here. Over uh, here, the actual silo part is 145 feet deep, housed the largest nuclear ICBM in U.S. history. It's nine megatons, so to put that in perspective, if you add up all the bombs and bullets, firing World War II would be about half of one of these. So it was um, definitely a fearsome weapon. Um, carried on the same thing that took astronauts into space in the 60s. Took me a long time to work around. Sort of thing. Is um, this thing still out there? So that that is gone. That is the actual silo closure door. It was about 740 tons, um, and so it was worth it when they decommissioned it to bust up the concrete and scrap off the steel frame that was in there for scrap because that was a lot of scrap. So when they decommissioned, but is this still there? So that is this, the this actual structure is still there. Okay. What they did is they blew up the top 20 feet of it, kind of like they blew up the top 20 feet of the, the access portal, and they they filled in the center launch duct. This is 145 feet deep with gravel and debris. Obviously, they took the missile off, and then they on level two here. We're on level two of the complex right now. They filled in. There's the silo equipment. The, the actual silo equipment areas are ringing the launch duct. So you have the launch duct, and then you have nine floors wrapping around that. So level two there, they actually filled in so that they could put a cap on the roof of level two, um, and that was part of the, the treaties and everything in the eighties that you know when they were decommissioning these. So uh, they put the cap on, and then they filled it up. So you actually drove over to this on your way in. Wow. It's still down there. Um, we never got into it because um, it's 145 feet of you know disaster basically. Yeah. So, um, but everything from here on out, for about 4,000 square feet, is what we've gotten into so far. Yeah. 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 Any questions on that? So we came down these steps. 
Yeah, uh huh. And they were in this room right here? Correct, yeah. yeah. And we're going to go to that room? Correct, uh huh. Are these ends of escape hatch for it? It is. So we actually had to open that back up. Um, it was still a little gravel. And uh, we will actually put concrete slurry and then gravel and mud and everything. So it was 18 feet of jackhammer to get that. Okay. Back towards you. And it is 6,000 pounds, so it's the move. Perfect. And that's about the guy. You don't want to get squished over there. So that's perfect. Wow. And that's uh, that was, that was pretty good. That's one of the better ones I've seen this week. And um, the uh, the uh, door and everything was underwater. Hinges for 25 years and still opens like a jam. Wow, that's so impressive. Have anything We've just greased them. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So here we are in the second part of the blast block. This is the way to the decontamination and long cable way. That's where we'll finish our tour. Um, this just would have been a junction room originally, just uh, conduits and cables going every which way. Um, this is called door 8, this would normally be closed. Um, and we have added a few things over the years, including a secret room. Oh. <laughs> one secret bathroom. So, um, you know, for the Airbnb guests, this is one of the bathrooms they can use. There's a full um, kit there. Uh, there's a little shower and everything behind here. And stuff. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. There's a light switch on the right if you want to. Cool. Wow. Nice. And that's all, you know, originally that would have just been those conduits going through. You can see the whole line of the toilet there. Um, that, this is all the space for conduits. Okay, like they were conduits? Yes. yes, so you, those, all, all the holes and everything above there, there would have been pipes and stuff in there. So just pipes holding cables. Oh, okay. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that's so cool. That's yeah. what I want when we build it in the house. When I think room. Yeah, 12 volt actuators are super fun. We can build a lot of those. Alright, so we'll continue on down the short cable way to the launch control center. Yeah, uh huh. This is cool. Sure, and originally there would have been all those cables and everything going over the head here. And then here we are in level two of the Alliance Control Center. You'll notice there's eight big springs, and that's actually what holds everything together. So the springs are bolted to this floor and they're connected to the ceiling above us. And then level one sits on top of this, and level three hangs below. So it's all isolated. Those springs are coming out? Yes, there's a foot gap between the floor and the walls all the way around. So this thing is not attached to the walls at all. Oh, we're floating. We're floating, yep. And so that would be for a nuclear attack that everything could move around and shift if there is a shockwave. Wow. The equipment wouldn't be broken. So what is my point? So they, that's for like, we can have classes and stuff down here. You know, oh, okay. We can have the desks and that sort of thing. And, um, originally, though, that would have not been there. And the cutoffs in the floor is where the original equipment racks used to be. So like the guidance computer for the missile and all that sort of thing. And then the actual launch console would be here. There'd be a key here and a key over here, space far enough apart that no one person can reach them. Turn those at the same time, 58 seconds later, missiles out the door, 30 minutes later, it's in the um, interestingly enough, one of the few things that is still classified about this program is the targets. That is, uh, those are, they didn't know then, it was just target one, two, and three, and uh, we're still in on um, Over here is where the actual staircase used to be. So a pretty normal looking staircase going up and down was right there. We actually built this spiral staircase and um, took that out just because it took up a lot of room and was off center. Yeah, this one that lights up a little bit better. And of course, the beds and everything. That tube there, where does that go? Oh yeah, that's a good question. So that is the level two ventilation shaft. So we are in the process of putting in a wind, or not an actual mini split air conditioner. Um, but that, that actually connects up with the escape shaft. So um, we're air conditioning this now just because over the past 11 years, we've heated it up just running appliances and having people in here and that sort of thing. The concrete holds heat really well. And so um, originally this did have an air conditioning system and all scrap. Of course, they were running a lot more equipment and that sort of thing. Because when we first got in, into this, it was like 58 degrees down here. Um, just because, you know, we're That's where you got the VGA, though. Yeah, 
So, uh, he was like, we're going to have to take everything. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. No, no, that's, that's the normal underground temperature. You know, if you, when you open one of these up, it's going to be, you know, between like 55 and 58 degrees. Um, but just because we, we've heated it up over the years, that's, um, that's happened. Very cool. Yeah, are right, you ready to go upstairs? Yeah. Sure. And um, the, the bed is actually cantilevered, so it's floating. There's no before underneath there. It's kind of cool. Um, easy to develop a design work and everything. Yeah, back in the corner sinks here, and there's no uh, plumbing underneath the sinks either. Yeah. And we take the plumbing to that? Yep, exactly. So that is um, part of the X bracing. If you, when we go upstairs, you'll notice um, it actually goes X brace, A brace, X brace. And we've actually cut out a lot of the bracing just because there's not much weight on this anymore. Mm -hmm. but yeah, when we go upstairs, you'll notice some A braces. So it, it alternated, and that's just part of the actual structure there. Oh, fancy. Yeah, so we got all the. Do you sit down here and watch movies, don't you? Oh, yeah, I do, definitely. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, a lot bigger than my 8 inch. <laughs> so we have on the uh, Titan Ranch YouTube channel, um, this is kind of where we what? documented some of the, you know, goings on and the process it took to, to make all of this. So this video that I'll show you here um, is a little clip. The, like, I, like I pointed out, that very first door was closed. Mm -hmm. And so this is looking down into the access portal. GT and another guy are in a bucket of a really big excavator and they're pushing on that door to relieve the water pressure because that water came in um, from where they blew up the silo. It just came in right over that crack, essentially, and it filled this up over 25 years, all the way up to chest deep on level one. So um, they had to push on the door to relieve the water pressure, pull that pin out. And uh, the rest of this is a 10-foot crawl to a 50-foot ladder. And this would have been used if the actual access portal had been destroyed. Um, so the they would have had to crawl in here and then take that you know climb a 50 feet straight up. Yes. So that tunnel is about 110 feet long, and there's a bulkhead at the end. Um, that bulkhead would not have been there. That's just keeping all the water and everything. Um, so normally you would have walked on this floor, it would have been solid. We actually cut this floor out and built a spiral staircase out of it. Um, so you would have walked straight on this, cables and conduit overhead, and then it would have started wrapping, wrapping around the inner launch stuff. You would have walked into level two silo equipment area. And from there you could take an elevator to whatever level you want. It's still about 110 more feet down from where we're standing. See you next time, Tide Ranch. Don't forget to subscribe.